You're gonna be able to do this by the end of this video. This is part three of the Raspberry Pi GPIO pin series. And in this one, it's controlling an RGB LED. It's pretty similar to part one of this series where we control just a single LED with the Raspberry Pi, but it takes it a few steps further. Part one of this video, how does an RGB LED work? At its core, an RGB LED is basically three separate LEDs, except they all have a shared cathode, which is the negative end of an LED. If I supply power to the red part, it's gonna be red, and if I supply power to the green part also, it's gonna be red and green. You can see on this white piece of paper how one circle of red overlaps with one circle of green, and those are the two red and green LEDs that are coming together. You may ask, if you're coming from art class, why isn't it red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors of art? And that's because the primary colors of art are different than the primary colors of science. In the primary colors of science, it uses differences in the wavelengths, and they end up summing up to white if you add everything together. You may ask, why does that not look white on your sheet of paper, Sam? That's because each sub-LED in the RGB LED is producing colors with different intensities. Now that we understand how an RGB LED works and its function, let's build the circuit. I have my breadboard here and I'm gonna start with the star of the show, the RGB LED. Slide that in. I'm putting the farthest pin into number 25 here. This is what my RGB LED looks like up close. The pin goes red, green, blue, then the ground. And I'm just going to remember that because that'll change how we arrange the circuit. Here's a graphic for how the breadboard works. And the thing we need to remember here is that each of these rows here is connected. But they're not connected across the divide. So rows are connected. I'm only using 100 ohm resistors here. We want different resistances for each of the red, green, blue. That's because the LEDs have different intensities at different colors. For instance, blue is much more intense than red, so when we're trying to mix the two colors, blue is going to overtake red if we have the same current going into it. How do we combine the resistors? We're going to combine them in series, and what that means is one after another. The resistance of two resistors in series is just the sum of the resistances. We could also do that in parallel, and that equation is a little more tricky. I'll put it up on the screen here, but not too hard to calculate. You could calculate a bit more exact what you want, but I'm doing 100 ohms for red, 200 ohms for green, and 300 ohms for blue. I find that that gives me a close enough to equal intensity for each of the colors. Red is on the far side. I'll start with that one. That's just 100 ohms. So I'm going to put it in the same row as that fourth red pin right here, and I'm going to bring it over into row 35. Okay. Next one, green, we want 200 ohms of resistance, so I'm going to put two resistors in series. Get that right in there, next to the red pin. I'm going to go in row 31. Just a reminder, this is how a breadboard works. All the rows are connected, so when I want to combine these two resistors into a series, I'm just going to put this one also in row 31. And now it's like these resistors are connected. Bring that over into row 40. Okay, and now we got the three for the blue. Put that in the blue, same row as the blue right there. Bring that over, I'm gonna put it in row 22. A little bent, okay. Then we're gonna Put this resistor in the same row, row 22. And it looks like it wants to go over to row 13. Then row 13 to wherever. It looks like row five. Good enough. Let's bring in the Raspberry Pi. Here's the schematic for the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. And what's the one pin on the RGB LED that we have not connected to yet? That's the ground. So you have a bunch of grounds to choose from. I'm going to pick the ground. That's the third pin down on the right. Put my male female jump there and then go right into that pin. Next, we got our 
red, green, and blue. I'm going to put my blue in GPIO pin 17. That's the sixth down on the left. And then that goes in row five with that blue resistor. This chain all the way back to the blue part of the RGB LED. Okay, next is green. That's going to go into pin 27, which is the seventh down on the left. And there's my green chain in row 40. And finally, red goes in pin 22, which is the eighth down on the left. And that meets up with the resistor in row 35. On to the final part, writing the code. I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi here. Just open up a terminal however you know how. And to get the hang of how to use the RGB LED, we're just going to work in the Python interpreter to start and then write a script after. So if you type Python, then we can do anything in normal Python. If you remember from the LED tutorial, we had from GPIO0 import LED. And this works just the same with an RGB LED, except we have three to control now. We have blue equals LED pin 17, green equals LED pin 27 and red equals LED pin 22. Those 17, 27, and 22 correspond to the GPIO pins that we've plugged the different LEDs into. And then, just like the LED tutorial, let's do blue dot on. We see the blue turn on, and we're going to also turn on red red dot on and this should give us a uh, pink purple which we're seeing here okay let's turn both of those off blue dot off red dot off and now we're gonna do from GPIO 0 import RGB LED enter there will be an error here watch this if we call our LED equals R, G, B, L, E, D, and then our pins. So our red pin was 22, green was 27, blue was 17. Enter. What's happening? It says pin 22 is already in use. And that's because we've set pin 22 to be an LED. We set all our pins to be an LED. So clear that. What we have to do is say blue.close red dot close and then green dot close now we've released those gpio pins from whatever led we had them assigned to and we're going to go back i'm going to push it up pushing the up arrow until i get here run that and now the code works what do you want to do led dot color equals it's going to be a tuple of three values it's going to be your red on off, green on off, blue on off. So we want, let's say, blue off, green on, red on. One is on, zero is off. Hit enter, and it's a mix of green and red. Let's change it to, I'm going to say, just blue. Put that for a one, zero, zero, one just blue. Now we can get a step more complicated. From color zero, import color with capital C. Now say led.color equals color.pink. I'm not sure if pink is a good color. If it's, let's see. Boom. Okay. Now we're going to make a script so we have the constant changing of color quit that and we're going to run the command sudo nano color change dot pi this is going to make a file called color change dot pi and allow us to edit it in an editor called nano all right what do we remember we need 
we need from GPIO zero import RGB LED. I'm not going to import color from color zero. We're just going to do all this with the ones and zeros. But we also need time. So import time. Awesome. For I in range two. Actually, I'm going to change this. R in range two. So that's going to give a zero and a one. Then we're going to do another for loop for G in range two. That's going to get make B equal to zero, then one. Tab, tab. For G. Oh, I did that in the wrong order. R, G, doesn't matter. R, G, B in range two. So what is this nested for loop going to do? It's going to give us every single combination of R, G, and B. What am I doing here? I want to set my LED dot color equal to R, G, B. We're going to cycle through every single color. Tab a bunch. Time dot sleep. 0 0.5. So yeah, let's go 0 0.25. Sleep a quarter of a second in between every single color. We're just going to keep going until we've gone through every single color. But we haven't defined our LED yet. So we're going to say LED equals, if you remember from our stuff in the Python interpreter, that's going to be RGB LED and then the GPIO pins. So 22, the one green was connected to GPIO 27, and then 17 is the one that blue is connected to. Control S to save, Control X to exit out of that. And now if we run Python color change.py, it's going to loop through every single possible color of the RGB LED. Here we go. That was pretty fast. So up arrow to pseudo nano color change.py. And I'm going to change that to half a second. Control S to save, Control X to exit. Up arrow twice to get to that previous command. Push enter. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And now you are a master at RGB LEDs. This could be really interesting if you have a mood-based RGB LED, or maybe if we're doing something with a volume meter, where red is very, very loud, green is a safe volume, or a thermometer even, or it's just an indicator of the goodness of the temperature. There are lots of applications for the RGB LED. In a future video, I'm going to talk about different GPIO projects that you can complete, and the RGB LED is included in those projects. I have a few more videos in this GPIO series, so stick around, check out the playlist so you can watch them all. If you haven't seen video one or two, I recommend going back, reviewing those, checking those out. Subscribe if this was helpful, maybe give a like, comment if you have any questions, and happy coding.